Hi, I'm Jay McClellan, and in this video I'm going to use my CNC router to cut some shell inlay for some guitars I'm making. Uh, this is part two of a two-part series. In part one, I used Fusion 360 to design my pattern and create uh, tool paths and G-code to run the CNC router. And then in this, in part two, I'm going to actually cut it out and assemble the inlay. If you haven't seen the part one video yet, I'll put links to that uh, down in the video description and also right up here. So you can go watch part one if you want to see how I designed the inlay pattern and created the tool paths and the G-code. In the part one video, I showed some still shots of an inlay uh, on a headstock of a guitar that I actually made years ago. And I made that with my CNC router back then, which uh, it was this machine, but I made a lot of improvements to the machine. I converted it from a router motor to a water-cooled spindle. I've got a new CNC controller, and I'll put links to a video showing those, uh, those improvements that I made. So really, it's, it's a different machine than I used last time and I'm using different software. I used vCarve Pro the first time around because that's what came with my CNC router, and now I'm using Fusion 360. So I have done this before, but on the other hand, I'm really doing it from scratch uh, with new software and new hardware, and uh, looking forward to trying it out. These are some of the materials I have for making shell inlay. Um, this is white mother of pearl. This is yellow or gold mother of pearl. This is a black mother of pearl. That's what it's called. Obviously, it's not uh, totally black, but it's a very dark color in comparison. And I actually cut two dragonfly bodies out of this many years ago when I made a pair of guitars. And I showed you the picture of that inlay that I did back then. This is pink snail shell. And then this is green abalone and paua abalone. Uh, you can see the difference between the two. The paua has much more vibrant colors and the green abalone is more of a pastel uh, color scheme and it tends to get more of these ripples in it. I actually prefer the green abalone over the Powa and it's a little bit easier to get. I got this material quite a few years ago and I probably have enough for, <laughs> for my lifetime, I suppose. Quite a few guitars, so I don't expect I'll be buying more. But if I were, I would seriously consider some of the newer composite material such as abalam, which is laminated from very thin layers of this material into large sheets. I plan to make the dragonfly bodies out of the black mother of pearl like I did before, and then I plan to make the wings out of this green abalone. I used the power abalone years ago when I did the other inlays, and it came out beautiful. It's nice, but I like the green. I didn't have it back then. And so these are the two materials I'm going to use for the Dragonfly inlay on the guitar headstocks. However, for this video, I'm going to start by cutting just white mother of pearl. And the reason is that it's a lot less expensive. And so since I'm testing out new software and new, new hardware setup for machining this, I'm going to cut it out of white mother of pearl to start with. And I can still use those pieces as an inlay on a different guitar. The next question is, how do we hold this material? We can't very well put some big clamps on here to try to machine little tiny pieces out of it and expect them to stay put. So to hold this for machining in the CNC router, I'm going to glue it down to this piece of phenolic board. It's about, about three or four millimeters thick, and I'm going to glue my pieces of inlay material onto the phenolic board with some super glue, cyanoacrylate glue, hold it down, then I can clamp down the board. I didn't invent that technique, I read about it, but I've used it before and it works quite well, so that's how we're gonna do it. I glued the white mother of pearl onto the phenolic board using the cyanoacrylate. Uh, first, I gave the board a little spritz of an accelerator that helps the glue set quickly. And then I put a good coat of the glue onto the back side of the mother of pearl. I used a, a thick cyanoacrylate glue because the surface may not be perfectly flat and that allows a little bit of gap filling ability. Honestly, I think you could use just about any any similar glue and it probably would work fine, but that's what I used is a thick cyanoacrylate glue, spread it out pretty well and pressed it on so that I've got a really good bond between the mother of pearl and the substrate. Here's an extreme close-up of two of the router bits I have for cutting shell inlay. The one on the right, and you can see my fingertip for scale, these are really tiny. The one on the right is 0 0.0313 inches 
are about 0.8 millimeters in diameter. And the one on the left is 0 0.012 inches or about 0.3 millimeters in diameter. Now I could get much finer detail with the smaller bit on the left, but it's also extremely fragile, so I'd have to cut very slowly and carefully to avoid breaking the bit. And I designed my pattern without any sharp inside curves or, or sharp inside corners so that I can use this slightly larger bit. Here's the collet nut that came with the spindle that I mounted on my uh, router. And this is a collet. The nut takes an ER20 collet. And this is a high precision ER20 collet that I got from PreciseBits.com. I have no affiliation with them. I just buy their stuff, but they make some, some good products as far as high precision. So this, as a high precision collet, has extremely low run out. To mount the collet in the nut, it, you got to kind of stick it in on an angle and it just sort of snaps in if you get it just right, like that. Now I'll use the wheel on my CNC router control panel, which I described in another video that I'll post a link to, to move the router head around a little bit and get it down close to position. Not too close, but I want to get it approximately over the inlay. Now that I've got everything approximately positioned right, I need to go back to Fusion 360 just briefly to print out a transparent guide that I can use to position everything correctly. To make a scale printout of my 3D design that I created in Fusion 360, I'm going to switch from the design to the drawing workspace, and I'll just click Drawing from Design. And I want a drawing that's going to be new drawing from scratch. Uh, most of the default should be fine. I'm going to select an A4 sheet size, which is uh, close to the paper that I'm going to be using, or the film that I'm going to be using, and uh, just press OK. Next, I can create what's called a base view of my model. And over here in the, di in the diagram, I'm going to select top view, scale one to one, and then I'll just place my dragonfly in the upper left corner of the page. Click on the other frame elements and get rid of them. So I'll just press Control P to print. And I have my printer loaded with transparency film, laser transparency film. So this should print out a transparent scale uh, printout of my model. I printed my drawing out on a sheet of laser transparency film and then I just cut it down to a more manageable size. So this should be exactly the scale of the pattern that's going to be machined. And just as a sanity check, I used some calipers and I designed my pattern to be 33 millimeters wide to fit the headstocks of my guitars. So this will serve as a guide for positioning the router bit on the inlay material. I trimmed my alignment guide a little better and taped it to this stick so I can move it around easily. And I've got the motion controller with all of the axes set to zero. So this is the zero, zero, zero point of my pattern. And all of the tool paths are relative to this as zero. And so by holding this right at the nose of the dragonfly, I can see where it's going to cut. And I've temporarily removed the clamp so that I can slide my inlay material around and I'm going to cut the body of the dragonfly first, so I'm going to take it out of the right-hand side of this inlay material. Now I've got the inlay position just where I want it, so I'm going to bring the clamps back and secure it in place. After I posted the part one video, David Faulkner wrote in and suggested I try the smoothing setting when generating the tool paths in Fusion 360. So I went back in and turned that on with a tolerance of 0.01 millimeters and it reduced the G-code files by about a factor of four. So much simpler files and David says he gets a better quality of cut as well. So I went through all of my tool paths, turned the smoothing on and regenerated the G-code files. Well, I'm ready to cut the shell material on my CNC router, but before I start, I want to say a word about dust collection because shell material is made of minerals, and when you cut it, it generates a really fine mineral dust. And getting that stuff in your lungs is a really bad idea, so if you're going to do this, I strongly recommend you set up good dust collection. Surrounding the collet on the spindle of my CNC router, I have this 3D printed nozzle and the nozzle connects to a flexible vacuum hose that ties into the central vacuum system in my workshop. It's quite old and I got it at a rummage sale for 20 bucks, but it works fine and I added a high efficiency particulate air filter that you can see at the right so it captures even extremely fine dust 
And that way I don't have to route the exhaust air out of the shop, which would draw warm air out of the shop in the winter time. So finally time to make the first cut. And uh, as you can see, I set the tool path to first make one pass around above the material, not actually cutting anything, just as a sanity check to make sure it's in the right place. And now it'll drop down and cut just kind of a skim. It's really just on the surface of the material. So depending on variations in the thickness, it may or may not cut in some places. And then once it makes the second pass, it'll go down the third pass. And now we're actually going to plunge down into the material. So you can see that as it cuts, the, uh, there's some dust piling up on the surface. That's the heavier particles. The lighter particles are getting pulled away by the dust collection quite efficiently. This is fun to watch, but you don't need to listen to me talk, so I'll just play you some guitar. Well, I'd say that went pretty well. I cleared off the heavier dust that settled on the surface. The lighter dust was collected quite efficiently by the dust collection. And uh, it looks like it made a nice clean cut. I cut all the way through the material and into the substrate below. And the piece that it cut out is still firmly attached to the substrate uh, by the glue, which is what we want. So looking good and we're ready to cut the next pieces. Once again, I loosened the clamps holding my phenolic sheet so I can move the material and I've got my alignment guide positioned right under the router bit with the CNC controller set to the 000 position. So now I'm going to cut the lower right wing and I'm going to slide my material so that the lower right wing fits right there.
Well, here's the end result, and I'm pretty happy with it. It looks like we got nice clean cuts around here. You can see the little lead-ins that the tool paths have, where it actually plunges just outside of the cut, and then and then br brings the bit in to the actual cut line. And that's done so that you don't get a little bump on the part when it's plunging down into the material. So that looks pretty good. You can see that it certainly cut all the way through the material down into the phenolic below, which is what we wanted. So overall, this looks really good. To release the inlay from the phenolic board, I'm going to use acetone to dissolve the cyanoacrylate glue that I used. I put the board in a glass container, just a little bit bigger than the board, and I'm going to pour in just enough acetone to cover it. It doesn't take very much if you get the size right. Now I'm going to cover this with some aluminum foil. Uh, this container does have a plastic lid, but acetone can react with the plastic and we don't want that. So I'm going to cover this with foil and I'll leave it overnight and that should be long enough to uh, dissolve the glue from under these pieces and release them. Well, the parts have been in the acetone for about 18 hours. So let's see how they did. Hopefully they've loosened up. I'm going to use some tweezers here and see if they'll come off the back. The back piece itself isn't loose yet, so I'm going to leave that on there. And uh, I was able to get the parts pretty well clustered on one side, so I can reuse this material on a future project. If this had been Powa abalone or green abalone, anything with a lot of texture and color, I would have placed the parts in the areas where the colors fit the design the best. But in the case of white mother of pearl like this, it's so homogeneous that I just put the parts as close together as possible to use the material efficiently. I'll just pull the parts out and set them on some paper towel to dry. The acetone evaporates pretty quickly, so this won't take very long. And we'll just let them dry off. Time to do a little test fit to see how well the pieces fit together. Bring in the lower wings first. And now the upper wings. There we are. That's just an approximate check, but uh, just offhand, it looks like things fit together pretty well. Next, I'm going to cut a test pocket in this piece of scrap wood to see how the fit is. And it's very likely that the pocket is going to be a little too small to fit the pieces of inlay that I cut. The reason for that is that as the, as the router bit traverses around the outside of the inlay material, the bit is rotating clockwise and its rotation as it feeds into new material tends to pull the bit away from the wall of the piece of inlay that it's cutting. It's a very tiny effect and it's lessened because I take multiple passes, but it still will make the pieces of inlay a tiny, tiny bit bigger than specified. The opposite effect happens when I cut the pocket in the wood. The bit is still rotating clockwise, but now it's inside the pocket and that clockwise rotation tends to pull the bit away from the wall of the pocket a tiny bit and it's going to make the pocket a little bit smaller than specified. Uh, it's a real small effect but it's there and I set up my tool path with zero tolerance to begin with just as a starting point. So I'll make the cut and we'll see how it works and then we'll adjust the tool path from there. Here's an extreme close-up of the bit I'm going to use to cut the pocket in the wood. It's 0.0313 inches in diameter, just like the shell cutter. But this bit is a down-cut spiral bit, so as I rotate it, you can see the spirals are pushing material down. And that gives a cleaner cut on the top edge of the pocket.
Well, here's the resulting pocket and the quality looks pretty good. If I place the inlay material next to it, visually it looks like the pocket is way too small. And that's partly an effect of the perspective of the camera, just because of the uh, inlay is sitting closer to the camera than the pocket. But it is in fact too small by a little tiny bit. So I'm going to have to tweak it a little and make the pocket just a tiny bit bigger. And I'll show you how I do that in Fusion 360. I opened up the toolpath for cutting the pocket and I'm going to turn on the stock to leave setting. Uh, I can use a negative stock to leave setting in order to take additional material off the edges of the pocket and make it slightly larger. So I'll turn this on. I'm going to change the radial stock to leave to 0.1 millimeters and uh, that's around the edges of the pocket. I'm going to set axial stock to leave to zero. That's along the axis so that would make the pocket shallower which I don't want to do. So I need to make this radial stock to leave negative 0.1 millimeters. So negative 0.1 millimeters is not going to leave stock, but actually is going to take off additional stock. So this will shave a tenth of a millimeter off the edges of the pocket to make it just slightly larger. Well, let's see how we did. Uh, that should have shaved a tenth of a millimeter off of the wall. Uh, so in terms of the overall size of the pocket, it would be two tenths of a millimeter side to side. Oh, nice. That is just perfect. I really guessed. <laughs> I guessed at a tenth of a millimeter. It seemed about right. And uh, that's just an absolutely perfect fit on the body. Now let's see if the wing pieces fit too. The body piece fit in okay, and I got the lower right wing to fit in, but I can't quite get this upper right wing to fit in also. It's really close, but it just won't quite drop in. So I think my pocket is still just a tiny bit snug, and I'm going to go back and back to Fusion 360 and modify the toolpath again and just slightly enlarge the pocket, and we'll try once more. I went back into Fusion 360 and adjusted the stock to leave parameter of my toolpath to minus 0.13 millimeters. So it took off an additional 0.03 millimeters, which is about a thousandth of an inch. It's not much, but it was enough to let me get the pieces fit into, into the pocket. And I'm pretty happy with the result. You can see some tiny gaps down at the bottom and up over the wing. They're very, very small. Uh, you really can't see them with the naked eye, but with the camera zoomed in like this, it's it, they kind of jump out. Once this is assembled, though, I'm going to glue it in to the wood with cyanoacrylate glue. That will fill in these gaps, and they'll completely disappear. Well, that wraps up my two-part video series on making shell inlay with a CNC router. I showed you how to make the patterns in Fusion 360, 
set up the tool paths, generate G-code, and then how to cut out the inlay material and how to cut out the wood pocket and finally how to fine tune the fit so that you get a really nice tight fit between the inlay material and the pocket itself. And I'm pretty happy with the result. I think, uh, I think it's gonna work out great. This is just a test piece, but I'm just about ready to cut the real inlay on the guitars I'm making. So I'll make a video of that when I get to that point. And I hope you enjoyed this and thanks for watching.